Howdy and welcome to the 10-week Bible study. This is week 10, day 5 of our study of 1st and 2nd Timothy. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about 2nd Timothy 4, 19-22. Well, welcome back to the 10-week Bible study. Again, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. Before we get started, if you would like to support the 10-week Bible study, please consider purchasing some of the books we have for sale. I really want to encourage you to think about leading a group of people around you, at your church, in your home, through God's word. It really will change lives. And I also want to say thank you to all of those Patreon supporters that are supporting the 10-week Bible study. It really does make a difference. With that, let's go ahead and pray before we start today. Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God. Speak to us. Fill our hearts with the knowledge of you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. We're reading today from the NIV. This is 2 Timothy 4, starting in verse 19. Greet Priscilla and Aquila in the household of Onesiphorus. Let's pause right there. This is going to be Paul's final words to Timothy. And in so many of his letters, he uses these final words to greet individual people. And a lot of times, you know, I've said this on, on multiple of Paul's letters that we've done here on the podcast. There's not always just a whole lot of spiritual immediate takeaway from these things, but I love, I love to read these things. Sometimes these last words of Paul, they mean more to me than than a lot of other stuff that we go through in here because there's this, this tender love for people that Paul has. Paul's been all over the place, right? Paul has not stayed in one location for very long, but wherever Paul has gone, he's encountered people that he absolutely falls in love with. And that that he, years later, he has fond memories of and he prays for them, he loves them. As believers, we may not always be in the same place, but we should have a perspective. And I think this is Paul's perspective. We should have a perspective that we're going to spend eternity with these people. And even if the Lord calls us to different places, if he calls us on here and there, and we don't get to physically be in their presence, we should have this kind of tender affection, this kind of tender love for other believers that we meet along the way. I am I'm grateful for all the amazing people that the Lord has put in my life through the years. Even though we're not still physically together, we don't speak very often. I am grateful, eternally grateful for those people that I've had the pleasure to make their acquaintance be their friends and actually get to spend time and years together with. So these, these passages matter to me and also they matter to God. And so I love to read things that matter to the Lord because I want them to matter to me too. Verse 20, Erastus stayed in Corinth and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Uh, we know that <laughs> We know Paul's story about crossing the Mediterranean, and and it's all about not wanting to uh, wait for spring to come, and so they let out, and the weather gets bad, and so Paul's like, I know, and I know a thing about this. I crossed the the Mediterranean, and things got bad, and it wasn't fun, Timothy. So uh, get here before winter. It's quite treacherous on the Mediterranean. I don't want you to have to be shipwrecked, have to float ashore on on parts of the shipwrecked, and then get bitten by a snake. This is all, of course, logged in, in the book of Acts. Fun stories uh, about how the Lord supernaturally saved Paul and everyone on the ship that he was on, saved him from even the, the viper that bit him when they're building a fire on shore. But Paul is saying, you know, they were pretty cool supernatural salvations that the Lord brought, but if you... If you get to choose, uh, choose not to have to be supernaturally saved from a shipwreck. It's just much better. It's much better when the ship just pulls up to the dock and you step off. Way better that way. Get here before winter, Timothy. Continuing on, Eubulus greets you and so do Prudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. Here we see that Paul is writing this not to just Timothy. He knows that Timothy is going to share this with others, and then it's going to get broadly distributed. He wants other people to read this letter. It is specifically aimed at Timothy, but he knows that he wants other people to read it. And we're still reading it to this day. 
It's still instructing us. It's still encouraging us. It's still moving our hearts with the knowledge of God to this day. And with that, we've come to the end of our study of First and Second Timothy. Thank you so much for being with me through this journey, through these, these two beautiful letters of Paul. We're going to be jumping next into the Old Testament. If you're following along with us here in order, we're going to be going back to the book of Esther and talking about Queen Esther and the exiles in Babylon and Persia. But for today, Thanks for being with me. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, for the 10-Week Bible Study. I can't wait to see you on the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the 10-Week Bible Study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.